So this is a sash and case window. This is a top sash, this is a bottom sash. So obviously they will slide this way, bottom sash will go up, top sash will go down, slide in. Now what we've done here is a full draft within renovation of the window. So what involves here is we plane back and take off all the paint on the flat edges inside the window, outside the window, along the edge here as well. Any putty that's loose, we chip out the putty and replace it with new stuff. Top sash again as well, we sand all the flat edges on inside and outside the window as well. This area here, what happens here on single glazed windows, a lot of condensation sits in this area here and you can see that doesn't actually look too great. So what we tend to do is, what will happen is all the paint will start getting like this. This will lie all the way along there. So then what we do is we scrape all the paint back to the bare timber, which you see on this part here, and along the bottom here. So this is where your handles will go for lifting the sash up. Again, all the condensation sits on this area here and bubble paint just like this part here. So then what we would do would be scrape the paint back so it'll look like this, we'll scrape it right back to look like this area here. Now we do this along the bottom of the window and along the top of the window as well. We don't really touch the astrocals or these areas here unless there is excessive cracking and painting which does get scraped back. The astrocals and this moulding here is left to decoration. A light sand fill over as well. So a common asked question that we get asked is can we make this area a lot neater? So it really depends on the putty on the other side. Obviously over the years, a lot of people are coming onto the window, coming onto the window, and as you can see there, there's a good area on the window there. But if you look through, you can see the paint on the other side from this area here. So we will try our best from the painting element is scraping that back and tidying it up as much as we can. So now we're hitting the putty on the inside. So if we have a look from the other side, you can see how much the paint's coming onto the window. You can see straight away how much paint works came onto the window there. So we can only take that back as far as the, the putty. And this area here is just where the putty's sitting there. So unless we strip all the putty out, we wouldn't get this 100% nice and tight back the way. We could only tidy it up the best we can, which to me, we can take that back in a lot better. On a new window, everything here is nice and sharp and nice fine line. On old windows like yourself, we can't guarantee to be a nice straight line. It'll really depend on the putty from the other side. So as you can see on this area here, how much the paint has come up onto it. So again, we will take this back and tidy it up, but it'll really depend on the putty on the other side here. So if you look back here, from the inside, this is the bit we looked at, you can see the excessive paint line sticking out here. You can see it scraped back there. You can see how much the paint lines came onto the window. So then what we would then do is just scrape it back and that takes it back from there. This will be tidied up right all the way up here, along the top and down again. We don't strip out all the putty. Any loose putty is taken away and new stuff's put back in again. So this is a renovation of the window. We then draft proof the window, which consists of, if you're looking at it from the inside of your window, there'll be parting beads stuck up the side on the window a router draft proofing strip along the middle and again along the bottom of the window, along the mid rail and then again along the bottom rail. Any imperfections in the timber or any holes or two part filled sanded and then what we then apply is a primer coat, an undercoat and then a top coat on the inside and on the outside of the window as well. The case which holds the window, which we'll look at later on, we burn the paint off right all the way back inside and outside. The mastic, which holds the window, we scrape all the mastic out, reform it back up again, and then apply a linseed oil sand mastic to the window as well. Again, new ropes are put on the window, new parting beads, new batten rods, full iron and grey on the window, and then also painting both sides as well. So what we've done to this window is a full draft proof and renovation, sanding all the flat edges down inside and outside the window, the top sash, the bottom sash, again sanded right down. The case, which is this part here, all the way down here and along this full sill. That was all burnt off, re-sanded down again. New pulley wheels installed. There's two here and two on here as well. Re-open the window. New parting beads, these go from here on the top and back down again. 
and then down the outside of the bottom sash as well, and you'll be able to see, see the brushes. New batten rods right round the whole window, an extra one along the bottom with an extra brush, and draft proof and brushes router down from just above the bottom sash, right down, right along here, and back up again. There you have a nice sliding movement of the window. The top sash slides perfectly as well, up and down. Fully painted inside and out, full ironmongery on the window so the window can swing in the way and there is white silicon installed on the outside of the window. So when we paint the window, we tend to just obviously paint all the flat edges that have been sanded, the full case. So when the window's closed in this position, we would paint right up, around here and down again. The batten rods painted all the way along this part here, we tend to only paint up six inches in the first part of the case here and again six inches down on the top sash from there. The rest of the wood is all primed, there isn't any bare timber left so there'll be no bare timber on here or on the inside of the parting beads as well. As I say it's applied a primer, an undercoat and either a gloss on the outside and an eggshell on the inside. We also overhauled these shutters so these were stuck in place so we freed them off up here, this area here, made sure they opened okay, realigned them and planed them to suit so there was no rubbing inside and outside and again these were fully decorated so the shutters will now close right the way back and fold in from this area here. This is a top sash right the way along here. This is a bottom sash. This is the astrical on the window so this is obviously a one pane, two pane top sash and then a one pane and a two pane bottom sash with the astrical along the middle. This is the meeting rail. This is the parting beads, which we install onto the windows, which has a draft proofing brush routered into it. On this area here, I'll go all the way along the top sash, return along the head, and then down on the other side here. So you have the draft proofing brush routered along the top and down, a routered in draft proofing brush along the middle, along the bottom of the window, these are called batten rods, so they'll sit on the window, this area here, and there's a brush routered from just above the bottom sash, right down. There's an extra one put along the ground, like this, and then up the side again as well. And this has a draft proofing brush routered into it as well. This here is the bottom rail of the window. This is the main area that rock gets into from the outside, whereas it's sometimes the case we'll have to replace the whole bottom rail, or again, we might have to splice in and patch in the sash as well. 